Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, now we're turning attention to uh, email politics. We've got with us this morning, right, Honorable Emeka Ehedioha, former Deputy Speaker, and now the uh, governorship candidate of the PDP in Imo State. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. Well, uh, already uh, many are just uh, watching from a distance how the political dynamics is playing out in Imo State, particularly with that of the APC. But I'm sure the PDP is a little somewhat hoping that the APC doesn't sort themselves out so uh, they can get it in. But I mean, even beyond that, do you think that as it is, even when they sort themselves out, the PDP can upstage the APC in the most states. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, uh, good morning, Nigerians. Um, the performance of the APC in Imo states is obviously very dismal. Uh, nothing to write home about. Um, obviously, our people have said no to the APC. The party is aware that uh, they are in a no win situation in, in my state uh, as a political party. Um, it also is very clear that they do not have candidates that can match our candidates in the general election. Most importantly for governorship, um, the choice before our people is, is um, as clear as um, where you compare daylight with nightfall. So we are in good shape. Our party who picked up um, ourselves from where we were after the 2015 disappointment. Um, we have done reasonably very well, have put together the party. Um, we have created structures, encouraged our membership to grow um, to various boot levels, chapter levels, ward levels, um, local government levels, central zone levels, and of course the state level. We have a stable party with a stable leadership. But we conducted the freest primaries ever in the history of our state. No other party tried to get no, near to the People's Democratic Party. Even more people are waiting for PDP to actually come at this point in time to rescue them from the man who could not rescue our party. But, our you know, uh, are you underestimating the fact that that's the, the ruling party in the state? They are the ruling party at the center, so it's not exactly going to be a stroll in the park for your party, especially when you know that uh, 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 the APGA, they've got a candidate in uh, Ararume. And then you also have, I think uh, Ikeda Hakim was also uh, working himself out with a court party. Uh, Hope Zodema eventually, if it comes through, or Uchi Mosi, whoever comes through, that's a uh, formidable team of aspirants or candidates that you eventually have there. It, it will be politically suicidal for you to wish away any aspirants. I mean, I, 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 I tell people that anybody who is on the ballot has a possibility a possibility of winning. However, the issues before us in Imo are such that our people are determined more than ever before. Because we have to make a choice between our today, our tomorrow, and of course we have seen what yesterday poses for us. Now, what is good about the situation in Imo is that Nigerians and indeed Imo people know all the candidates who are well known for different reasons in different ways. So the choice will be clearer. Where you have a problem is if you have candidates that are not very well known, then you begin to circumvest. Now, that is not the situation. Emeka Ihedia is a very prominent Nigerian, well known across the country and within the state. Um, the candidates of the other parties are also very prominent and well known. And so I, I think it's going to be a character, a choice of character, a choice of capacity. Now you want to support somebody that you believe in. Now where we are, we are at the lowest ebb in the state. And so we need someone that can catapult us with honesty, sincerity of purpose, dedication, sense of patriotism, and believability. You must be somebody that is God-fearing because we have been completely debased. Mm -hmm. What you have in our state is infrastructural decay. And institutional decadence that cannot sustain. So, what what's the different thing you're going to bring in besides the fact that you say God fearing? Um, one of the things you're God fearing. Everything. You're truthful. You're sincere. You have a sense of purpose. I mean, all the other candidates. My, tell you my that antecedents they this, are clear. They will also tell you they have their my antecedents. antecedents are clear. So, what's what's what are you bringing to the table? Now, that's what I'm saying. I said that 
we are all well known. We are very prominent. I mean, so and these people, qualities are real. No, what I'm saying, people know our past, and so they can be very into the future. Now, so I've been known to be a man um, with clear sense of purpose. Uh, I'm known to be one that has shown high sense of patriotism. I am a go-getter. I do not take a no for an answer. I have no failure around my path when it comes to getting things for people. I'm aware of the challenges. Now, when I was in the House of Representatives, as God will have it, I served in the House for, for 12 years in different capacities as Chairman, Committee of Marine Transport. My footprints are there on the sands of time. I impacted heavily on that committee and in the House generally, and the records are there for anybody to find out. I um, have the credit of sponsoring the first ever private members bill that was signed into law, which has to do with getting together what we used to call in those days clearing and forwarding agencies. So I had to now sponsor a bill to legislate and to give meaning to life to freight forwarding. Okay. That bill we'll, is there for me. We'll go to break, but when we'll come back, mm -hmm. we'll take a look at some of the issues concerning the PDP in Emo states and why you think you will win. Join us again.